All right, welcome. I'm glad you could join us for a little bit on getting the dirt about soils and the North Carolina Envirothon. My name is Dave Limbo. I am a professor at NC State University in the Soil Science Department. And I'm going to try to kind of introduce you to the joys, the wonders, and all that's good about soils in this short half hour presentation. So I want to start, as you're thinking about things, what are four things that you can't live without? For some people, it's a little difficult to come up with these. For others, they can do it really quick. One obvious one is air. Without air, we would suffocate and die. Without water, and water's number two. Without water, we would dry up and die. Uh, we're mostly water, so it's pretty important to us. The next one that a lot of people say is food, and it's actually something that is more important than food. And then somebody may say shelter. Well, likewise, is something more important than shelter. Then usually somebody goes into, well, we need something for heat or for fuel. And they're right there, but most of our fuel comes from the sun. In the plants, fossil fuel, all of our energy that we get comes from the sun. So the three things so far, water, air, and sunlight. And by now you've probably figured out that the fourth thing is soil. So the fourth thing that you can't live without is soil. And the reason it's more important than food or shelter is that our food all comes from the soil. Everything we eat comes from the soil. We live in a house made of bricks or wood, and that comes from the soil. And then another thing that's pretty important for us is our clothing. Cotton, wool, all come from the soil, either directly or indirectly. So without soil, we would be hungry, homeless, and naked. So it's a pretty important thing for us to have and to think about in terms of our everyday life. But most people kind of forget that soil is important. And what they often do is they say, does soil equal dirt? Or they say dirt, and they use the word dirt and soil synonymously. But in fact, soil does not equal dirt. Dirt is the stuff that's under your fingernails. Dirt is the stuff that you sweep off the floor. So soil is much, much more important than just calling it dirt. All right, so now imagine you have a handful of soil and you're looking at it really closely, squeezing it, feels really nice, but what is in it? What actually makes up the soil? And the first thing that we can see is that this inorganic material, minerals, sand, silt, clay, the, the kind of hard stuff that's in the soil. Next is the living organic materials like worms, bacteria, fungi. All of these things are alive in the soil. And the reason they're alive in the soil is for the dead stuff that's in there. The dead organic matter is decomposed by all of those critters worms, etc. So leaves and other animals, or in some cases people, they will decompose in the soil. So there is dead organic matter. These three things so are, make up the solids that are in the soil. The solid material is the minerals, the organic material living and dead, and that's kind of the hard stuff, the, the main thing in there. But then there's something else completely, which a lot of, again, people forget and that's the pore space. The pore space that's present in the soil can either be filled with air or water or both. Usually it's a little bit of each in the soil um, at any one time. So five things that are present in the soil. Mineral material, living organic matter, dead organic matter, air, and water. Those five things are what we call the soil body. So five things make up the soil body. Okay. Next, we want to see how you are at, at trying to figure out some acronyms. So we're going to talk about the soil from CLORPT. And if you've looked through the Envirothon, you kind of know that the CLORPT stands for the factors of formation. How does a soil form? Okay, there are five factors. Climate, that's the CL. Organism, the O. Relief, the R. Parent material, the P. And last, time. We're going to take a little time and go through each one of these so that you get an idea as to how important they are and how the soil changes based on these factors of formation. So again, it's an interaction of these factors that make the soil look and behave the way that it does. So let's start off with climate. Climate is temperature, rainfall, 
um, sunlight aspect, where it falls on the landscape, um, snowfall, etc. And it has a pretty major impact. If you look at our soils in North Carolina, this happens to be the Cecil soil, which is our state soil. You notice it has a uh, thick topsoil and a really red subsoil. And this is typical of a soil in the highly weathered southeastern part of the United States in a humid climate. Okay. It has, again, obvious horizons. There's evidence that material has moved in and out of it. There's a lot of organic matter in the surface and it has some clay that has accumulated in the subsoil. Okay. Contrast that with a soil in an arid environment where there's low rainfall. Because of that, very little organic matter. We actually can start to get salts or carbonates like limestone accumulating within that profile and the horizons are much less obvious. So we could say that this soil may not look as developed as our typical soils in the Piedmont. Next, we want to talk about organisms, the O in Chlorpt. And organisms are also known as the vegetation or the biology. It includes plants, animals, and us. We have a major impact on the soil as well. So think of organisms not just as the plants, but as animals as well. So we look at the soil, and this particular soil has developed under coniferous vegetation or under pine trees. Pine trees, when they shed their needles in the fall and water moves through it, it's very acidic. And that acid tends to leach out the color, leach out the organic matter, leach out iron and aluminum oxides and move them down deeper into the profile, deeper into the soil. So you can see this white zone between about 12 and 16 inches. That is a horizon that has been highly leached. It's similar to if you took Coca-Cola and poured it over a rusty bolt. The Coca-Cola is somewhat acid and it will take the rust off and move it away. The uh, liquid, the water that's moved through that pine vegetation or that pine uh, litter is also acidic and strips the sand grains to give you clean sand grains below. The white grains are nothing but sand. Contrast that with this soil which is developed under a mixed hardwood or a mixed forest vegetation. Generally a little bit more fertile. There's, it's generally less acid. You don't see these extreme uh, leaching. The uh, leach zone between 10 and 20 centimeters is a little bit um, yellower. It doesn't show as much leaching as that same soil or the same type of soil if it was under coniferous vegetation. So a little bit different look just because of where it sat or where it was um, in the landscape with different vegetation upon it. Our next factor of formation is relief. Relief is also known as topography, okay, which is the ups and downs. And we can look at topography based on where you are on the landscape. You can be in the summit, the top, the shoulder, next part down, the back slope, foot slope, toe slope, terrace and drainage way, all moving from the top summit down to a lower point on the landscape. Now I've always had a hard time remembering these, so I kind of remember it be, uh, based on the fact that my head is kind of the summit, so your summit, your shoulder, back slope, and then if you can see you've got your foot and then toe slope. So that's how I can remember what the different landscape positions are. So looking at it on a, on a uh, diagram out in the field or shot from the field, summit is the high point, shoulders next, side slope, foot slope, toe slope. And why this is important, it has to do with how much water moves in or across that landscape. So imagine if you were a drop of water and you fell on the summit. You could either sink in or run off. If you ran off, you'd move down to the shoulder. Well, at the same time that it's raining, there's going to be water falling on the shoulder. Well, those drops of water can either sink in or move down slope. Well, now, if some sink in, but most still move down slope, you've got more water moving down until you get down to the toe slope where there's a lot more water. So what that results in is a change in what the soils look like based on where they formed on the landscape. That's called a topo sequence or a catena. Um, the 
yellow, uh, yellow or browner soil is on the summit. This is a fairly well-drained soil. The water table is deeper. The uh, soil at the toe slope is grayer, mainly because a lot of the iron has been removed from it, moved out of it, and it is a wetter soil. We actually use color in the soil to tell us where the water table is. Uh, soil at the summit will have a deeper water table, so gray colors will come in much deeper in the profile, whereas the soil at the toe slope will be grayer closer to the surface. So the catena, the, the topo sequence, is part of the, the relief factor of formation.